ATV Talk, the podcast. Sit down with your host industry professional, Leonard Duncan, as the men and women from the ATV world bring their behind-the-scenes stories to life. Every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And remember, dream big. It could be your story one day. Brought to you by Take-Two Custom Teams. Screen printing experience that is dedicated to quality and customer service every time. Jason Sloan, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I want to welcome you to ATV Talk. I'm your host, Leonard Duncan. We're going to talk to Jason Sloan, son of the Iron Man. So, yep. how you been? It's been it's been quite a while since you and I've had some conversations. I'm actually doing really well. Um, I've got a fiance and a almost one year old little boy now, so doing really good. Have you been uh, Have you been doing any riding? Yeah, I actually got back into it um, about two years ago. Now I'm actually racing bikes. So uh, at least at least you're on something with a motor, right? Yeah, finally. It was, it'd been a while since I'd done anything. So yeah, it's it's nice to be back doing that and going to the races again for sure. Are you still in Martinsville? Yeah. Yep. Been here my whole life. So probably be here the rest of my life. <laughs> Oh, from the pictures I'm seeing, it looks pretty nice. Yeah, yep. How's how's mom and, and the family? Everybody's doing really well. Um, my sister has two little girls. Well, they're not really little anymore. My The oldest is 14, I think, and um, then the youngest is 11. My mom, she works every day and goes to Florida a lot. Um, but other than that, yeah, everybody's we're doing really well. So that's great. That's great to hear. Yeah. Yep. So let me know about your past. I mean, what's been going on for the last twenty some years that uh, that we haven't been talking? Well, um, I had a pretty rocky deal, man. I uh, after, with all the racing I'd done, I. I got, I broke so many bones. I got kind of messed up on the pain pills from all the doctors. Um, and it was really, really bad for a long time. I lost all hope and everything and got away from all the racing and just kind of lost myself for a long time. Um, and finally I, I got in some trouble and, and honestly it saved my life. Uh, you know, so I got thank God for that because I, I was in a really, really bad spot. And, you know, I wish my dad would have been around because he would have definitely kicked my butt. <laughs> <laughs> but that wasn't the case. We, uh, I just had to take a step back. And, you know, I, like I said, you know, I got in trouble and it, I, I was forced to sit down and, figure out what I needed to do to get clean and it saved me, man. I, I got, I got clean. I've got almost three years that I've, I've been completely clean off of all that stuff. And, um, in those three years, man, I really bounced back and I started racing again, like we talked about a minute ago. And, um, you know, I've got a beautiful fiance and we've got a little boy um, his name's Lane Robert after Robert, obviously after my dad, um, hoping that here in a few years we'll get him into racing. So we'll see. That's pretty awesome. I'm glad, yeah. I'm glad you're making strides. Uh, you know, I knew, yep. I knew you'd had some problems, but we had kind of lost touch. I almost didn't yeah. to reach out to you. I think that you yeah. reached out to me on Facebook. Yes, I did. I, I had to, I have, I've had pretty much to everyone. I, I really let a lot of people down. I had a really, really bright future going for me there for a long time in the racing, in a racing career. And just, I messed up, man. I thought I could control everything and I couldn't, not with what I was doing. And I really, I let a lot of people down and I, 
I feel terrible about it, but I'm trying not to beat myself up over the past too much. I've, I've learned in a lot of the stuff I've been through that you can't do that. You got to sit back and see what you've done and you got to learn from it and, and move forward. Cause if you sit there in the past too long, it just drags you down even worse. So. Well, I know that you have a, a an amazing support staff back, back home with yeah. Emily and, yeah. and friends, especially some of the guys that w- were friends with your dad and uh, yeah. they look out for you and they look out for your mom. I, I still, yeah. I, I still see bits and pieces of it. Not a lot, but some. And yeah. You know, you and I have spoke, and Jason, yeah. he's always there, man. You, you just have to reach out and accept your life as it is and know that yeah. as long as you're on the right path, all those people that support you still support you and are still there for you. Well, and that's something I found out, and I was afraid that wasn't going to be the case. I figured everybody would kind of just write me off because of what I had, what had happened, and but it, that wasn't the case at all. Um, everybody knew who I was before and who I really was as a person. And that, that's huge, man. That, that really helped, you know, being able to talk to you and the other guys that helped me out racing. Um, that's huge. That, that really helps a lot. Well, racing is just a small portion of who we are and what we do. You know, yeah. the real deep and the root portion of it is, is who you are as a man and who we are as men. Yeah. And if you judge somebody on a mistake, then we'd all be done. Oh, that's for sure. (laughs) You know, I mean, I've made my share of mistakes in my life. And I've never, it's never affected my business life, thank God. But it it has affected my my personal life, right? right? Yeah. Yeah, we're all just human. So, I mean, it's... It gets hard sometimes, but like I said, you got a good support system. That that's a big that's a big part of being able to step back in what you were doing and who you were and take off from there. And that's what I've been able to do. I've I've like I said, I've gained a lot in the past three years. So that's that's good. I'm sure that the lessons that you learned from your dad, I know you were young, but yeah, he was an impactful person. I mean, yeah. Oh man, yeah. My life. That's what I tell people, man. That that guy wasn't just my father, man. He was a living hero to me and a lot of other people. Um, everyone I talk to, man, says the same thing. Pretty much, he impacted them in whatever way it was. Um, so me being able to try to, you know, try there at first trying to live up into to his shoes. That's that's a hard shoe to fill. Um, but being able to swallow my pride and um, try to come back as a man and a father and um, just someone I think he would be proud of now. That that helps and that I think you know finally I think he would be able to be say he was proud of me finally. So that 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 makes me feel good. But, you know, he never would have wanted you to try to fill his shoes. He would have wanted you yeah. to your own path as you are now. You're right. Yeah, you're right. You know, I, I was yeah. I was pretty green when, when I, I met your dad. I was just breaking into becoming a race mechanic and starting to travel. Yep. And uh, the respect that he had given me, uh, I'll never forget. And, and I try to look back on my experiences with younger riders and even some of the yeah. old guys that I come across. And I try to stick my hand out as he did to me. Yeah. Oh yeah. I never, uh, I, I remember him, us coming to pick you up, uh, at the airport to go to Blackwater. Oh it man. All in, that, in that van. <laughs> I remember that too. Yep. I, I went to the wrong side times, of the airport. Man. I went yep. to the wrong side of the airport. He was laughing at me. Well, you never traveled before? And I go, well, not many times, no. <laughs> Probably not to any place like that, that's for sure. Well, you you remember Davis, West, West Virginia. I'm oh, sure. yeah. It was wild. <laughs> I still tell this story today. I'm in that van. Yeah. I'm sitting there, and I'm scared to death because I don't know where I'm going. Mm-hmm. And uh, we drive across that wooden bridge. 
And the first thing I see yeah. is a guy riding a 185 S three wheeler holding the Budweiser. His beard is so long that it's flapping over each shoulder and he ain't yeah. got teeth and no shoe. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I'm surprised he even had any clothes on. <laughs> it was wild, man. That was wild times. Well, that was, that was an eye opening experience for me. Probably the one of the oh yeah things I've ever seen. Yeah, heck yeah. So yeah, that was some about, great, it's good fun. When you talk Go about ahead, sorry. you uh you did a little bit of traveling when your dad when you were pretty young. And uh Yeah, we was we were I went to about every one of them. That's that's pretty awesome. You got to you got to live a life that not many kids get yep. to. Yeah, oh yeah. Where uh, where have you been uh, going with some of the things that you do with your racing? How have you applied some of the lessons that you learned from your dad to the motorcycle racing of today? Well, my dad was, he was the type of person that, I mean, it, he's the type of person that didn't give up on anything, anything he ever, once he set his mind to something, he was going to do it. It didn't matter what it was what got in his way. I mean, the proof of the, of that is what happened when he was killed. I mean, you know, he, he was, he bled internally that, that entire race. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure he knew he was pretty messed up. The first lap he came around, um, he had pulled the whole shot and it was at starvation point, um, in West Virginia. He pulled the whole shot, went in the woods first, and to come back, the leaders all came around on the first lap, and he wasn't wasn't nowhere around. So we waited and waited, and he came around finally. He was, I don't know how many minutes down. It was way down. He was like 132nd overall or something like that. Um, he come around and was shaking his head and holding on to his stomach. So we knew something had happened. Um, but, man, he turned it on and within those next four laps was in the lead, um, had passed Barry Hawk. And I mean, this whole time he's bleeding internally. He had a hole in his aorta from a crash. We, we guess it was from a pretty bad crash on the first lap. Um, so, you know, I mean, he kept going and kept going, just wasn't no quitting to him, man. And it was wild. We had, a uh, American Honda, Scott Summers had had him kind of set up with a deal that was going to happen the next day. Um, they were in our pits that day. And with that going on, there definitely wasn't a way he was stopping. Um, he just kept going. And like I said, within the next four laps, he was in the lead and he made it, you know, back then they used to have mile marker checkpoints where you got your little tag on your handlebars punched. And a guy, you know, every few mile markers, they'd have a guy with a radio there telling you who was in the lead and top five, top 10, whatever it was. Well, he led that whole last lap all the way up until that last mile marker. And then we, we were all standing there at the finish line right there was a big motocross track out there where they had the finish line and Barry come out of the woods. So we waited, I don't know, maybe me and like three of my cousins, we waited like maybe 10 seconds where we took off all running backwards on the track and found him up there. He had crashed. And well, I mean, we think he pretty much just ran out of blood at that point. Cause by then he'd already been bleeding internally for like, you know, the two hours of the race basically. But that's just kind of what my thing was. I, I got, you know, all that stuff I went through, I, I've raced four wheelers and bikes since I was four years old and it's something I loved and I didn't want to quit doing it. So I'm, you know, I'm 38 years old now and I said, heck with it. Why not? Let's try it again. So well, that's, that was my thing. That's a pretty amazing story about your dad though. Yeah. Yeah. It was, a. Uh, it was, it was wild that day. I seen some stuff that day that, I've never seen before and I'll never see again. Um, I've never seen somebody ride a four that hard or anything for that matter in my life. 
the way he pat was passing people out there on that motocross track it was it was unreal i bet i'll bet yeah how old were you then i was 12 wow yep it's quite a quite a burden for a 12 year old to carry yeah it was man i i didn't deal with it for a long time you know i I tried to be there for my mom and my sister. A lot of the people at the funeral said, well, you're the man of the house now. And I, I took that to heart. Um, I tried to, I tried to step up and do what I could. And, um, I, I think I, I didn't deal with it for a long time. And, and then I tried to step into the racing myself and take off where he had kind of left off. And, and I, you know, I just, I, I think I had too much on my shoulders and I was trying to take on too much. I was trying to take on too much for myself and I overwhelmed myself, I think. Well, that's, really? That's what it sounds like. I mean, yeah, you, uh, you probably didn't reach out. You probably didn't reach your hand out for the help that you needed. No, I didn't. I thought I, well, that's what I was meaning. I thought I had everything under control and I could handle it, but it, I think it kind of got the best of me. I let everything get the best of me. Well, you collected it all in and you're doing better now. That's what, that's the most important. Yep. That's right. Yep. And your mom, your mom is proud of you. Yeah. She's yeah. We, me and her have a, it's needless to say our relationship whenever I was not doing well was very strained. Um, but now man, she sees I'm doing good and got a little boy and, our relationship hasn't ever been better so that's great i haven't talked to your sister much how's she doing she's good she's doing good um like i said she's got two little girls um yeah i mean it's crazy they're really not small anymore so and my son's getting ready to turn one here in next well about a month from yesterday so time's gonna fly by i have a feeling <laughs> isn't that crazy yeah it I, is. I have five grandkids, and number six will be born next month. Really? Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> in a short amount of time, all the things that have gone on, you know. Yeah. I have a third. I have a thirty-year-old daughter, a twenty-eight-year-old son, and my other yeah. daughter is uh, twenty-seven, a uh, twenty-six, and then a twenty-five-year-old yeah. son, and then a, a twenty-two-year-old daughter. <laughs> yeah that's crazy yeah i never imagined that it, it, the time would go by so fast i don't get to go travel uh, to east much now but yeah i uh i really appreciate you reaching out to me and and wanting to talk because you never yeah. want to leave, you never want to leave things as a negative you always want to leave things as a positive and yeah definitely that's i agree you know you also mentioned that you wanted to speak to uh, my brother, Lauren. And, yeah. and, you know, he's waiting whenever you guys want to get the call. Brother. Okay. He's ready to talk to you. All right. You know, yeah, and I need to get a hold of – I haven't talked to Craig Peterson with ITP. He helped me out a lot. And there's a couple other guys I need to – I haven't been able to reach out to yet that I'm, I'm going to. So I think that I think you're, you're going to get a positive response from everybody. I really yeah, do. Yeah, I, I – I hope so, man. I, I, I know I messed up, but I was like I said, I tried, man, and I just I overwhelmed myself, and I, I let everything get the best of me. But, you know, it happens. So, well, I'm really proud that you're on the right path, and you just stay. Yeah. And just you have to know this: the people that care will always be there, through thick and yeah. Oh, yeah. So when you need, you better reach your hand out and I'll be there. Okay. Oh yeah. Well, I appreciate that. You know, your, your family is as much a part of our family. And, and as far as the legacy goes back in time, you know, when you start looking at the old photos and you start reading the old articles, yeah. who, who's, whose dad is in those articles? Yours. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It's pretty wild, man. I, and the things there, uh, with this, the Ironman race in Crawfordsville, it's still going on. That really helps. You know, that, that's really cool. Um, I sold a, a while, you know, after I had gotten clean, I sold the four wheeler that, that he got killed on. 
um, to a guy that's going to be restoring it. It's something I'd wanted to do. You know, that's why I'd kept it for so long. I, I raced it some, I kind of, you know, back in like Oh two Oh one back in those days, I, I started racing it um, before I got on the Suzuki's and was racing those. But I, I always had kept that fuller because I wanted to do something like that eventually. And, um, he, he's got the money to be able to do it right. And I think I did the right thing by, by selling it to him. He's, it's not going to be ridden. Um, and it's, we're eventually, once it gets finished, we're going to have it, him, he's going to bring it up to Ironman every year and we're going to try to display it where everybody can come check it out. So I think that'll be really cool. Make sure you get that contact information from us to us so that if he needs anything okay. from us, we'll help him out best we can, you know, yeah, see definitely. That, we'll okay. see if that happens because right. it's a big part of all of our history and all of our, our, our depth in the sport and the age that we go back yeah. and the memory yeah. because I, I, I was with Bob in Pendezvous too, you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's one I didn't get to make it to. And I really wished I could have, man, that would have been something. I bet that was wild. Pendezvous. Gosh, that's a whole different world. I mean, yeah. Granted you're in a different country, you know, they yeah. speak French and you're, you're just dealing with it and you, you don't even, you don't even know what it's like until you get to experience that many ATVs on the line with that many spectators because oh you know, yeah I bet. Races that have you know if you're if you drew two thousand spectators to an atv race you'd be like oh my god what happened oh yeah and they get <laughs> twenty five thousand people come out and watch that race oh man that's wild yeah yeah There's more spectators than there are racers and that doesn't happen you know you're right that doesn't happen at all yeah yeah i still got the the old vcr tape of that race <laughs> Yeah, you still do? Oh, yeah. That, you know, that, I think they ended up second that year. Yeah, they did. Yep. It, it, that was wild. That was wild. Yeah. I love oh, I, I, you know, I got to be there in 93 when we won it the first time. Yeah. And uh, that was that was pretty amazing for me. My brother went oh, to I bet. Two, and then he couldn't make it for the 93 race. And yeah, Martin Fletcher and I um, were the guys working on the bike. Martin built it, and I just was the assist. And uh, right. I took the wall duties uh, for the pit board and everything. Yeah, like that. and uh, you just you learn so much in such a fast pace because I was still pretty green at that point. You know, granted, I've been yeah. things my whole life, but when you go and take over the role of being that guy. Uh, in that oh yeah I bet uh, you know especially with the the greats like your dad being there and there was just some other so many of the other guys that some of the French guys I forgot their names now I'm sorry guys if you're listening yeah I can't I think that the guys that my dad had raced with over there I think his name was Cyril I can't remember his last name but he had originally went over there to be on the American team if I remember right with Mark Earhart and Doug Eichner. But the French team, I think something that something had happened and the guy was sick and they'd asked dad to step in and he ended up racing with the French team. Yeah, they Mark had Earhart, they had some Mark Earhart and Doug Eichner won and then dad and the, the other guy Cyril I wish Yeah, I, I remember the guys I remember who it is, yeah. The, and, and, and he ended up second. Right. And they they gave him a hell of a battle, you know. Yeah, yeah. At least at least until it got closer to the end. I think they had they had a, some type of small mechanical issue. Uh, mm -hmm. if I can't remember correctly. You know. Yeah. I don't think your dad ever got to ride one of our banshees over there. No, I don't think he did either. That, that, that it's kind of surreal when you start thinking back all the years and all the things that we've done. You know. He's never, oh, he, yeah. just so you know, he's oh, never not been a part of it. You know, that's yeah. hard for you. Well, to hear. I, I can imagine that there's uh, the stories I still, you know, like I said, people, anytime 
I, they fi- people find out who I am. I mean, I it, I've been all over the country, and people find out my last name. And they're and if it, especially if it's got anything to do with racing, they're are you Bob Sloan's son? I'm like, yeah. And the, they'll t- they'll start telling stories, and it's like man, everywhere I go. But yeah, I love to hear that, man. It's awesome. I know. I just sometimes I think it's probably hard for you sometimes as well. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was maybe at first. Now, telling stories and reliving it kind of helps, you know. So, I bet. I, uh, as you can well tell, I love to sit and tell the stories and and hear the story. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Me too. I don't remember where <laughs> my that. Son, came. Go ahead. My son, he's got a lot of stories to hear. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> probably get tired of me talking. Well, I, I was just sitting at the table with my dad here uh, about an hour ago, and we yeah. were talking old motorcycle race stories. And, and you know, I've heard some of them before, but uh, I, I love hearing them every time. I got to get him to sit oh, yeah. across from me, and turn the recorder on, and, and, and listen to him because I want to keep those stories forever. You know? So, yeah, that's cool. Uh, yeah. It, it's just it's all about part of what we do and who we are, you know? Yeah, for sure. Do you think that you're going to get on a quad? I would like to, uh, I don't know. I mean, well, I would like to, I, that's what I was, I mean, that's what I grew up doing. When I was, uh, when I was 10, um, in 92, I actually won the national championship on the, the youth GNCC series. Um, and that's pretty much what I grew up doing there toward the last couple of years. My dad was alive. He kind of was, he got me a bike and was kind of trying to get me, you know, more on a bike more often. Um, just because back then that's where most of the help was and, you know, the money you were able to, there were some guys that were able to make some money back then doing that. And he, he thought back then that that, you know, that's would have been a better option for me if I was wanting to try to do this as a, as a career. Um, but I was always better on a four wheeler. Um, and so whenever I, um, sold this four wheeler, that's actually what I did with the money is bought this bike. Um, but I, I'm hoping to eventually get back, get another four wheeler and get one built and get it built right. I mean, especially whenever I get my son old enough to where he's wanting to start riding, hopefully um, I want to be able to get him on both and just see which, which he likes better. That's my dad gave me that option. I want to be able to do the same thing for my son. And, you know, me and dad was always riding together and that was, and that was a huge part of me growing up. I was, I mean, I, that's, I lived for those days, man, when me and dad was going to go ride, you know, so. I want to be able to do that for my son too. So that's awesome. I love hearing that, you know, yeah, transition yeah. there for you. Just make sure that, uh, just make sure you keep making those strides forward and, and always do the right things. Have yeah, you definitely. thought of any, uh, UTV stuff, you know, maybe spending some time in a cage. I have, um, I, I actually raced one, uh, what was it? About well, two summers ago. Um, I, I wasn't driving it, um, but my cousin has one, and he 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 was doing pretty good. And I got in there in one with him, and man, that was something else. I I was yelling, screaming the whole time. I loved it. So that's something I've been thinking about as well. And there's a there's a couple series here in Indiana that are still running those. Um, so that's something I'm thinking about as well. That's fun. A lot of fun. You don't have to beat the heck out of yourself. It's bad either. How far do you travel on the motorcycle? Do you go to any of the GNCC races and race them, or do you stay? Well, the the past since I got back into it, I just been um, staying around here in Indiana. Um, obviously, I'm going to Ironman each time each year. I've went, but um, there's a there's a Midwet called MWXC series and a IXCR series. And then another series called the Crossroads series that's here in Indiana. And I've been hitting some of those here and there. I haven't raced any this year yet. 
obviously we had all this COVID-19 stuff that delayed everything. But um, also my son was born last end of last summer in June, end of June last summer. So I haven't went to any this year. I'm kind of been waiting. I want to be able to make sure he's big enough to, he's starting to crawl. He's crawling around. He won't be long before he's walking. So I want to, well, I'm going to go to some here in the next month or so, I'm hoping. Has the coronavirus affected you or your guys' ability to work there much or anything like that? No, man. Actually, well, our uh, I actually work for my cousin, um, Clint Taylor. He was a big part of the racing. He always he was at all of them. He was at the one that my dad was killed at. I work for him. He owns a company called Metal Masters. Um <laughs> We had to lay off most of our guys. I think we kept like four of us, two of us out in the field and two of us in the shop. Um, was only off, off like one day, but everyone else off was off like two and a half weeks, I think, something like that. But luckily I got to keep working and it kind of actually picked up there for a while because a lot of the places that we do work in, since they didn't have any of their employees there, they were able to go ahead and do some of the work that they were needing done, we went ahead and was able to go ahead and do. So got lucky on that one. That's good. That's really good. Yeah. Glad to hear that. Yeah. I mean, I'm, everybody that I spoke to has been pretty fortunate. Their business or their businesses have been thriving or doing okay during this. I know there are yeah. people that unfortunately are not able to work and not able to take care of their self, themselves. Uh, at, yeah. and, and, you know, our heart goes out to them, but, yeah, for sure. Our engine facility is busier than it's ever been in the history of the company. You know, is it really? That's good. That's really yeah. good. I mean, uh, my brother, actually, I talked to Lauren earlier today and it's Sunday for all of those people that don't know, don't know what they were recording yeah. this, but he's <laughs> working. you know, you spend seven days a week, he'll spend, you know, six, eight hours on a Sunday down in the engine shop, just working um, where nobody, yeah. and there's no phone. You know, yeah. it gets more work done on that day than during the week. Oh, I, yeah, I bet. <laughs> you know, and I have a I have a shop here at my house where I build bikes, and you know, you go out there, and in, in three hours you can do what it takes you eight hours to do during the yeah. regular time with the phone. Yeah, I bet. I'm, I'm I'm glad that we got to have this conversation. You know. Yeah, I am too, for sure. What are your thoughts when you start looking at the uh, the face of the ATV industry? You know, when you think of it in the in all forms, you know, from racing on the West Coast to racing on the East Coast, and maybe some of the things that you see abroad. Uh, what's your opinion of the overall take of of how the ATV industry is doing? Uh, man, I would say I think it's doing good. I, my dad would be amazed at the strides that everyone ha that everything has taken the technology the how much how how much bigger everything has gotten um you know like i spoke about before that's kind of why he was getting me you know on a bike because he i think he was kind of afraid that it wasn't doing very well then back talking about back in like 92 93 94 um, but since then, um, I, I feel like it's doing really well. Uh, I mean, you go to the racetracks now and there's, it's like it was back then with the bikes, the guys of the teams pulling up in semis. I mean, you see that some now with the four wheelers. So I, I, I think it's doing pretty well. Um, and I, like I said, I, I think my dad would agree. So. That's awesome. I mean, you get so many different mixed opinions. You know, I know the works class where I spend most of my time, the pro class is starting, finally started to grow in 2020. Yeah. COVID hits, you know, and, and wipes out the season, but they still have more entries in the pro class and, the, and in the pro-am class than they've had in a while. And I yeah. like to see that. And you, you see uh, uh, for the GNCC stuff, the little bit of stuff that I do see, I see a full gate. Yeah. When I see a full gate at the GNC, the motocross. So I, I'm happy. Yeah. And the local, well, and I know, I, like I said, I, I've been out of it a little bit or for a while, obviously quite a while, but 
when I do go up to Ironman, that's the big national I always go to for sure every year, um, the motocross and the cross country. And it's huge. Um, there's so many people there, so many spectators, so many racers. So I, I, I think it's doing pretty well. Um, I mean, like I said, I've been out of it for quite a while and I haven't seen a lot of what's happened and, but I always try to make it up there every year, especially to that one. So what I do see, I'm, I'm impressed. Can we go back in time a little bit? I want to ask you some questions about, yes. about some of the things that you've seen your dad. For do. Sure. Yeah, for sure. When, when, he was racing and you were, I guess you might as well say his, his, uh, right-hand man. What did you watch him do as far as training at, at that time in the industry when training really wasn't a big thing? I think my dad started that. And there's a lot of people that will agree with that because Back then, when we first started, it seems to me, I was a kid, um, but it seems to me back then that GNCC series was kind of like a weekend thing to go have fun. And it still is. Don't get me wrong about that. But my dad started pushing the limits. And, man, he was an animal. He, uh, he was up at 530 every morning jogging, lifting weights, and come home, he'd ride. And then he'd come out here and after working eight hours, you know, during the day up at Allison's, he'd come out here and work on other people's stuff in the garage. And, but uh, he really pushed, I think he really, and a lot of people I think would agree with this. He really pushed a lot of people to make it something more than what it was before more of a competition because he started you know, he, I think he felt he was older than most of the guys. I mean, Barry Hawk was 20 years old, 18, 19, 20 years old. My dad was 36, 35. So he had to work his ass off and he did, man. I, that guy was an animal. I've never met anyone like him in my life and I never will again. I know that for sure. Um, so I think, you know, as far as that, man, he, he pushed the sport or that the cross country stuff. I think he pushed it into kind of what it is now. That's awesome. That's my, that's my opinion. Of course I'm biased. That's my father, but. <laughs> oh, Hey, being a little biased, never hurt anybody, you know? Right. Yeah. Did, so he spent a lot of time out in that garage doing a lot of prep work. Oh yeah. That's where he lived. And I was right there with him, you know? So I was rebuilding people's top ends whenever I was 10, 11 years old. <laughs> I, I remember Bob would call and talk to Lauren and him and Bob would have long conversations. And Oh yeah. I remember he'd sit right here at this kitchen table in there. I'm at mom's right now. And he'd sit right in there. I remember long, long conversations with a lot of people. Oh yeah. They, they were always trying to innovate, trying to make yep. things. And Lauren and him were coming oh. up with new combinations to make yeah. it power to make it more rideable to make it more durable yep yeah i did a lot of testing we especially whenever um he started running those other frames the the jp frames and there was a lot of a lot of went on there um uh, there was many many hours of that thing getting built both of them there was two different ones then 93 and 94 um or maybe it was 92, 93, but anyway, a lot of hours, a lot of phone calls, a lot of hard work. I remember that for sure. Yeah. Cause you almost have to refixture some of this stuff. Cause I'm, I remember putting them together myself. Whole bunch yeah. of job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I bet. Not, not like it was to not like it is today where, you know, we're using factory frames in the parks, you know, I'm used to using yeah. the roll design stuff. Yep. Slides right in the hole and slide the hole. Oh, yeah. Done. You know, you don't, yep. have, you don't have to get a ratchet strap and a pry bar. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I've seen it. Oh, man. I remember, I remember the A arms and you call JP and go, hey, well, they don't fit. <laughs> oh, yeah. they do. Come on. Don't tell me that. Yep. 
I know. I remember my dad and him had some very heated conversations a couple times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think but that was part of it, man. I think they, uh, I mean, they, like you said, they were, you guys were innovating stuff. I mean, you were coming up with stuff that no one had ever done and pushing the sport to a whole new level. So that's what it takes. Uh, it's, we've just been very fortunate. You know, we had a good base, you know, good yeah. teaching so that we were, you know, it, it, it's kind of like now the way we do things and the way that we set it up in the beginning or the way, Lauren set it up in the beginning with my dad is, you know, you know, your product, you know, your process and, you know, it's yeah. just a simple thing. And, you know, I've kind of fell right into it because I was trained by the same guy that Lauren was. Lauren refined some of his, his methods. And yeah, me as a, me as a chassis builder and a race mechanic, I developed my own ways of putting things together, but it's, it's the same process. You, you take the parts of, uh, you take it apart a certain way and you put it yeah. back together a certain way. And, and yeah, a lot of people, to me, it's tight and bolts, tight and bolt. It, but it's the preparation before you get there. Right. That matters. Most guys. Oh yeah. Part up. So I know I asked you about riding a four wheeler. Do you have uh, your sights set on one specific brand? Or would you just be able to just ride one? Well, I, I don't know. I if I was to get one, I would I would probably try to get a Honda. Um, but I mean, the only things I've ever really ridden was a Honda and a Suzuki. Um, so it would probably definitely be one of those. That's just because that's what I know. Um, but then again, things have changed in the past. <laughs> 15, 20 years. So, well, yeah, 15 years, I guess. Um, so really, yeah, I mean, at this point I would, I would be open to trying anything. So. Well, that Yamaha is a good bike. I know. And that's what everybody says. I, and I know my buddy actually just one year, year or two ago, I guess. And he said he loves it. So. Um, I lost a little bit of that there. Oh, I was just saying my buddy had bought one a couple of years ago, a brand new one, and he just got it built. Um, he said he loves it. And I've heard that from a lot of people. So I've only ridden one of the YFZs one time. And I did, I really did like it, but that, and that was all the way back in like, Oh, five, I think. Um, but I, I liked it. I just, I just never, I've never had one. So. Yeah. I, I have got to build a few and, and I really like, I like the Honda better myself because I'm a Honda guy, yeah. but yeah, that's the way I, am. I, I just can't tell you that Yamaha. It, it's not a bad bike. I'm, I like that's, it. Too. Yeah. That's what I hear from everyone. So, so you know, when you're, when you're like, if we're going to go ride, edges and whoops and go play in the desert i'm gonna build a yeah. we're gonna go do some motocross or maybe some woods you know yeah. i can still build a honda to do those things too but i'm really right. gonna consider the yamaha uh, a little more than i ever would because it lends itself to doing some of those things that the honda like it'll out turn a honda all day long and and that's, oh yeah that's huge when you're in the woods and, and oh yeah for sure I think power, when you break it down, when you start splitting hairs, they're both really powerful machines, especially with the yeah. lot you have to do with the run in the pro class. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. You, after it's all said and done, you put some money into them. You end up with something nice. It's they're nice. That's for sure. And that it would be, it would be one of the three. I mean, I would, like I said, I would probably go for a Honda. Um, just because I'm a Honda guy, but I've heard a lot of good things about the Yamaha. So, yeah, yeah, you can see. If you're, you're going to go race in the GNCs, G, GNCC stuff, you probably really got to consider that Yamaha because she's yeah. a good bike and what well, it's been pretty dominant on that series for a few years. Well, that's for sure. Yeah, <laughs> you know that. Yeah, I don't know if the if the Honda guys aren't pushing the envelope 
or if the development's yeah. not there, or maybe the fact that this that Yamaha lends itself to that environment, you know, it's more. Right. Um, it does have a heating issue, and once they they pretty much mastered keeping the radiator clean, and well, if you keep the radiator yeah. clean, it, you're not going to have any problems. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm interested. I I, I want to get I want to get on a four wheeler again. Um, I I want to get. I've been out of it so long. I'm out of shape really bad. <laughs> so, but it's it's funny whenever I get on something. I I'm always at the starting line. I'm saying to myself, well, I'm just gonna go have fun. But man, as soon as the flag drops and somebody tries to pass me, it's over with. I'm as fast as I can go for about a lap or two and then I'm about to die because I'm out of shape. So <laughs> I got, I want to, I want to go fast, but I got to get myself back in shape. But now the thing of it is, it's hard to make myself, well, I can jump that or I can climb that. I, I wouldn't have ever thought about it back in the, whenever I was younger. Now that I got a little boy and I know I got to go to work tomorrow, I, I think about it a little bit more now. So you got a little older, a little wiser. It's something. I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jason, I really appreciate you taking some time with me. I know that no we've problem. Talked, I know that we've talked about some things that are that are probably a little tough for you. And I appreciate you being honest with me and opening up and and, and telling yeah. me your story. Um, I do want to make sure I extend the invitation to you to come back and, and speak with me again. Um, okay. You're always welcome. You're always welcome. You know, at Duncan Racing, you're always welcome in our family. And um, I appreciate uh, that. Photos of you and the little one. Please give a big hug and a kiss to your mom for me. I haven't seen her in years. I will. Having had a chance to talk to her, but uh, you know, she she still holds a special place. Because who do you think took care of me when we were back there in West Virginia? Uh, yeah, I know. I remember. Yeah, she looked after me. You know. Yep. Uh, so did your dad, but you know, she made sure yeah. she's not, not putting me in a situation that I didn't need to be in. Yep. <laughs> I, again, thanks for coming on ATV talk. I want to extend no the to get you back on another episode okay. later on. Uh, let's get the code sure. out of the way. Yeah. Maybe get, you, may, maybe get you on a quad, get you some riding and, uh, and get that'd, you that'd be awesome. All right, brother, you have a great night and, and thank, thank the family for, uh, letting me steal you for a little while okay no problem hey thanks i want to say thanks a lot for having me on here man it's been it's been fun it's my honor and my pleasure brother all right man thanks buddy I'm proud of you i appreciate it man thank you thank you man talk to you later all right yeah see you buddy the team here at ATV Talk would love your feedback. Please email us at hello at atvtalkpodcast.com Duncan Technologies International. More than 33 years in the industry is building racing programs and ATVs around the world. We build winners. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, don't forget to rate us on all the available platforms and share us with your loved ones. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook for more ATV Talk news. See you next time.